Hey, what's up guys? I now have the proper crystal. Maybe we can take a look in here and see. One megahertz. And you can hear that sine wave on the radio. Turn it up here a little bit. And now, if we go over here and adjust the frequency, you will hear it. Let's see if we take it up here. No, that's too high to hear. There's just about a kilohertz. Put this here so you guys can hear it better. There's two kilohertz. And then down. Trying to, trying to get everything into this shot at once is kind of hard. So anyway, you can see that my technique works. And we have made a functioning radio transmitter, which has been proven by turning this off. And the noise is gone. So that is about as simple and as crude as you can get to make a radio transmitter. Now, let's get rid of the function generator leads. And let's also get rid of this audio transformer. And let's replace it with something slightly more sophisticated. A little circuit in IC designed for just about this purpose. Okay, so the circuit I'm talking about here is the LM386, which is a little... 8 pin dip audio amplifier circuit and super simple to hook up in fact we are going to ignore pins 1 8 and 7 yeah you know, we're going to put uh we're going to put our 5 volts in there on pin 6 of course we'll ground pin 4 and we'll put our audio in right there on pins two and three and we'll take our output over to the crystal so let me draw that out for you so you can get a better idea so here is our new circuit there's our LM 386 there's our crystal crystal pardon the noise in the background the uh, grass cutting guys here today Pin 3 gets the aerial, pin 2 goes to ground, pin 4 comes over and attaches to pin 5 of the LM386, which is the output pin. Pin 6 goes to our plus 5 volt DC, and there will be a uh, decoupling cap there, 10 microfarad, cross it to ground. Pin 4 grounded, 8, 7, and 1, of course we said are not connected. Pin 2 and 3 are our audio inputs. Pin 2 is our negative. Pin 3 is our positive. And we're just going to run a 1,000 microfarad cap from uh, pin 3 positive down to ground to give us a little bit of uh, uh, filtering, basically. It's going to clean up the, the audio output waveform a little bit. Now, if you want to make more volume what you can do is you can add another cap between pin 1 and 8 on those gain you know start out small 10 mics move up from there and uh, 
you'll have yourself a little uh, AM radio transmitter that depending on the length of the antenna can transmit either around the room, around the house, or around your yard. I warn you again, governments are very particular about who controls and puts information on their airwaves. I also like to thank uh, my friend Barry down in Alligator Land. You guys remember Barry. Barry sent me this year Alligator. Anyway, he reminded me that the FCC is a Federal Communications Commission. And like I told him, the older I get, the less I something, something, something. So, <laughs> let's put this circuit together. Okay, here it is all put together. Bring this up here and maybe it'll focus. There's our LM386. See, we have our inputs going to come in here on pin 2. Now, I'm running pin th or pin 3. I'm running pin 2 down to ground. It, it doesn't matter if I put the grounded input, the ground side input from our sound source into pin 2 or into ground. They both go to the same place. There's our decoupling cap coming off pin 6, which is going to VCC. There is our output pin 5, which is going to this cap, going through a resistor down to ground. And it also goes over where it modulates our carrier and will travel out through the antenna just like that. So here's our radio, still tuned to the same frequency it was in the last video. I'll put it right here. Give me something to prop it up on. That's not bad, right? So let's hook up our battery pack power source. Ground first. And you notice how that changed. We're, we're transmitting a carrier now. Let me move this over here. All right. Next, we will put in our uh, modulation. Let me just get this extra wire out the way here. We're using a stereo cable, but we're only inputting one side of it. Uh, Paul, you need the yellow. The yellow is the tip. Dag nabbit. What I don't need is the white. So we'll get the white out of the way. It doesn't matter white or red, it's just one side or the other. So that's our ground. And then there is our positive signal input. I mean, audio is AC, so there really is no one way or the other, all right? We got the phone here. What I've done is I've just recorded the Gettysburg address so that we can talk and listen at the same time. All right, let's power up the transmitter. Hold on, I think it's my LED lights here. Wait, wait. That's pretty annoying. All right. Let's see if we can get some sound out of this. You guys see we're okay? I know the sound isn't all that great. There's a lot of... Hold on. All right, if I hold this here, hey, that's a lot better, right? Whether that nation or any nation so there we go. So Not bad at all. We are met on a great Antenna placement is important. Right? I'm impressed. I'm impressed it actually works. 
even though I know the technology behind it, it's still kind of neat. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little foray into uh, building a radio transmitter. If you guys are interested in taking this little series further, uh, next we'll build a uh, receiver. Still stick with AM because I mean that's just the uh, the simplest thing to do. I want to thank you guys for uh, watching, commenting, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And turn the lights back on. There we go. All right, big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.